Hey, do you ever wonder how to put a vintage air system in, a, in an LS swap vehicle? Well, in my Chevelle, I'll show you how to do it. It's really pretty straightforward. Cutting the lines, running all the lines, sorting it all out, bending the line, the hard lines when they don't work, and making a bracket. This is gonna be so simple, you're gonna be like, wow, I can definitely do this. Let me show you how I did it. All right, so check it out. So I'm gonna install the vintage air setup in my 69 Chevelle twin turbo. And I bought a kit specifically for 69 Chevelle, which is a great bolt-on kit. Vintage Air has made a nice product so far that I've seen. Everything's kind of worked out really nice. So the problem is, is that it's for a standard setup, okay? So with a standard setup, you have access to putting the, I think this is called the dryer right here, putting this down here. But the thing is with the intercooler, you can't do that. So every single little thing that you change on a car changes so many other things. So what I have to do is I have to try to run off because I have to do my lines because uh, I'm getting I'm getting close to having my engine completely installed now. So the bottom line on this side is the AC line. So I have to run these first, and then my heater hoses go on top of that, and then my uh, my radiator hose. So I have to do all these things before I can install this downpipe. The downpipe is now completely fabricated, and it's ready to go in. It just needs to be wrapped, which I'm going to have my buddies come over and help me wrap it, just because. With these, I could stick them in the vise and hold it on the clamp, but on the downpipes, you gotta kinda hold it and wrap it. And you want it to be tight, so it'd just be easier with like two people holding it and then one person wrapping it all, making it all nice and pretty. So anyway, so I was wondering like what exactly, you know, which hoses go where? Well, the thing is, is it's kind of dummy proof in a lot of ways, like they're different sizes. So once you take the little, the little block off plate off the, I think it's a sanded, I think that's the name of the, it's a, it's a really small compressor for my build to hide it down in the corner because I'm using an LQ4 and I needed to have it down there instead of up top because of the turbos. So if you're not running turbos, you can just mount the, the AC compressor up here like normal and you're, you're good to go. But with mine, it just doesn't work out. So these are different sizes. This is the larger 10 one. So the hoses that go in here are different sizes too. The, I did find that, you know, and honestly, I could have lost the bolts because I'm, I'm notorious for losing stuff. You can ask my nephew, Jamie, how many times I tell him I lost something. I, I could 100% have lost it, but I can't find the bolts that were supposed to, because I had the block off plate bolts, but I didn't have like the, the, the bolts to go in here afterwards that, that need to be longer because the block off plate bolts are kind of short. So I, these are M8, I think they're 1.25s. I'm using some 25 millimeter to kind of fill in the, to, to, so I get nice, complete depth and everything like that. They're 10.9 volts. I'm not really sure how that rates for strength-wise. I think I think that's more than good enough. I don't think you're. I don't think I, I need to torque them down to 100 pounds or anything like that. So I'm gonna take a quick picture to kind of show you the different sizes and show you what that looks like. So with that picture, you can see that they're obviously different sizes. You can't mess them up. The, the compressor has different sizes because I was like, well, which one's the, which one's the, the the suction and which one's the feed? You know. So I was like, ugh, you know. Anyway, so we got the heater hose hoses out of here, so they're out. Of, so they're not. So they're out of the picture. They're a different type of hose. Because I was like, oh man, I got four hoses coming in here. Which ones are which? And then I was like, well, which one of these AC lines? So now what I have to figure out is which one of these AC lines fit in here. How do I route them? <laughs> How do I route them and still have room for everything else? Because, like I said, when you start adding things, you start taking up space in inside the the engine bay. So I have to, I think I have an idea of how I'm going to run these lines and I have to, I have to kind of mock them up again and everything, I, everything's a mock up, right? So I had to run the turbo drain feed lines, which I've already got that done. And then now I've got the AC lines, which I feel like these could go, I need to put the little, so let's put these on. It looks like these are supposed to, according to this, the, the instruction of the AC hose, it says locate the number eight compressor AC hose, lubricate, you know, connect the 135 degree female fitting with the service port, and then connect that to the discharge port. I'm guessing the number eight is the smaller line. Yeah, number eight is the smaller one. So I'm not gonna put through the O ring and all that stuff because I'm just gonna set them in there for now. So let's go ahead and take this off. If you look, because this shows the number eight ring and the number 10 ring, they're obviously bigger. So it's probably eight tenths of an inch. I mean, eight sixteenths of an inch and uh, everything else. So I'm guessing it's probably like AN lines. So let's go ahead and stick this on here. And then that'll determine where we're gonna put the uh, the hose. There we go, we got that in there. 
Now this stuff is just sitting in here loosely. I did buy a special tool to crimp the lines. You, you, you have to crimp the lines. You can either do it yourself or you can send it somewhere. I wanted to be able to do it myself just because I love tools, you know? I love having new tools, man. Anybody, will t you know, I'm like most people, man. You just, you can't ever have enough tools. I think it's pretty cool to have a tool to do this. I I'm hoping that it, it, I can use it for other things too, besides just these AC lines, because I know that you can do like certain other fittings, but we'll see. But I also have to keep this line with enough gap to where it, it won't be in the way of the, the heater hose lines. So those are sitting like that. Man, I sure wish that, oh, I wish I had a straighter one. That would be a lot better. Boy, I'm gonna have to turn those kind of, I'm not sure how I'm gonna have to route those. Man, that's a shit show there. Everything I do seems to be a shit show anymore when it comes to like routing and lines and all this stuff. Huh, I wonder if I could see something. Do that, AC lines would be over there. That would probably work. Oh, let's see if we can fish that line back through the backside and do it that way. Give me a little bit more room. But this pipe, if I remember right, let me put this pipe in here just to make sure. Yeah, that would be, that's perfect. All right, so this is just on the top. So that kind of gave me a lot of work room. And then I might be able to do the other one the same way, honestly. But something, if that goes, what I don't understand is, where's the line? To the service port. Nobody discharge route the straight female fitting. I don't understand where the lines go, honestly. So we've got the number 10 goes into there. Uh, I don't get it. So the number 10, the big line goes to the AC compressor itself, and the number eight goes to the front. So if this goes to the front, I wish they had a drawing showing like exactly how to do an AC system, because like to me, this is all Greek. Like I've never ran an AC system. So the idea of all this stuff just doesn't make any sense in my head. You know? I guess this can't go that way. This has got to go to the front. I don't remember any other hoses, but there has to be more to this than just going there because I, I guess that they should have a, a routing how AC lines go because this shows coming from the feed, the number 10 should go straight to there, which I could route this honestly. Like this thing is so long, I could route this under here and then come back up in there. This way it would be completely out of the way of everything and it wouldn't be if there was ever a problem you'd still have a bunch of extra hose for doing that which could be like this which would be pretty cool that would be pretty cool to do that you know be okay with that that would that would give me plenty of space there and then where does the other line go does the other line go to this is a lot shorter so maybe this is supposed to go to see it doesn't really show it it's it's not very clear it should show like a layout i don't understand like this whole system it says all right let's take a little break i'm gonna do some more research i'm gonna see if i can print out because if you look at this thing here this is this is pretty stupid it doesn't show the whole routing it just shows like where do these lines exactly go there's a line that comes off of here but where does it connect to you don't even see any of that i guess they just figure hey if you're doing this you should know this right well no, I don't know this. Because you have two hoses coming off of here. I know that there's a system, but if it's not hooked up right, it's not going to work right, you know? So, I don't get it. I'm guessing first, let's just get this thing mounted in somewhere that we can use this, which I feel perfect would be right about here, I would say. So now we're going to need to make sure that this bracket kind of works on there. I don't think the brackets that came with it are going to work for me, but we'll see. You can see they're really simple, so we'll be able to figure something out. Yeah. I want to keep it off the, 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 the setup a little bit. So maybe if we even if we just put a spacer, I'm going to put a spacer that's going to be one inch spacer, a nice little block. So let's go make us a spacer and that'll space out that dryer a little bit and that'll make it a little bit easier to mount it right for us. All right. What I like to do is mark out my bend lines with tape. Tape is just nice and simple, nice straight line. You don't have to worry about measuring it. Keep your gaps the same. Should all be pretty squared away. I'm gonna try and make sure fit just to make sure that this is the right gap for me. This would be, I think we're gonna probably do two. So we'll do the one, which will be the bracket, and then the two, and then we'll bend it straight. So perfect. Good morning. All right, here we go. Made my little bracket. Let's go ahead and install it. Gonna round over the cone horse. All right, test this one more time. Perfect. All right, now we know that this thing here is not right, but let's see if we can kind of bend it to get it to work right for us. So we know that this, according to flow, flow is this way. That means we need to turn it from there to that way. So the top. 
top goes that way, in and out, okay, so that would be this way, in and out, right? So I think that if we could bend this, let's see here, just about the right size too. Dang, I'm gonna try to straighten this out. Bend's pretty easy actually. I think that we might be able to make this work maybe. Huh, well, it's pretty crazy. Let's see now. All right, let's see if we can bend this now. I might be able to make this work now. All right, let's see here. I don't know what we can do. I need a little piece of tape here. A smidge bigger than 18 millimeter. Woo. All right, so it looks like this line here is eight, is uh, three quarters of an inch. Let's go ahead and tighten this, snug this up just a little bit, just to kind of man. How in the frick am I gonna get to that? Oh man, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a tough one there. All right, we'll leave that like that. Now we'll see just how we can mount this guy. We'll put this in here. Just how this thing works. This is the in. Comes from the condenser to the in. Alright, well, let's see how that bracket works so I think that bracket's gonna work pretty good. Alright, so what we're gonna do is we put those there. Yeah. That out. Morning. Morning, how you doing? I love that color. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's a candy blue, I custom made it. Really? Yeah, I paint cars. You yeah. can come check it out. Yeah, yeah. So is it almost done? It's pretty close, yeah. Wow. You can see here in the sunlight right over here. This is what it looks like in the sun. Yeah. I'm calling it banging blue. Wow. It is just banging. Yes. If you look at the one way, it looks kind of purple. Mm -hmm. And then it looks yeah, like, like, yeah. like almost like a greenish hue to kind of like a like a chartreuse kind of. And then it's got the blue, you know, of course. But right. Yeah. Yeah, because when I was walking by, I was like, and then it, it, it almost like sparkled. Oh, yeah. It's, I, it's like, a, oh, I love that color. It's a very exclusive color. Yeah. You won't see another car like this. No, no. This color, no. It's a custom color. So, yeah. It looks good. Looks and thanks. good. <laughs> thanks. Have a nice vlog. You too. I mean, thanks. <laughs> All right, so here's the bracket. Let's go try it out. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, tell you what, you can't get any better than that, man. You can't get any better than that. Come on. Come on, man. That's good stuff there. We've got two hard lines that need to run. Or no, actually just one. So we're going to need to cut a hole in there. Pretty big for that. I'm not really sure where exactly this is going to be, but I know that this is going to go right about in there. So I know that in order to fit the hard line from the compressor to here is going to have a certain size line. So let's cut that out. This line here has got to go in there like that. So let's go ahead and cut that out and then we'll cut out for the, the other one. We're gonna definitely gonna need to take the radiator out for this. Definitely don't want to cut the radiator. We don't want to cut the radiator. And then, and then we will cut this. There we go. Now we'll drill the corner holes. We're gonna take this out though. Get this out of the way. All right, put that out. Now we can take the radiator out. I'm gonna say that bit is shit. Throw that thing away. I think that's the one that I was trying to drill that stainless with. Time to buy some new bits, I think. That thing's shit too. See, that's how they're supposed to cut. Yeah. You know what? Cut it from the backside. Let's cut that. This is so close. Thank you so much. Yeah. 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 We've got the dryer hooked up, and this line here should, in theory, go to the compressor. I'm good, how about you? I've been struggling on this thing all morning. Finally figured it out, so pretty excited. Oh, not even close. The paint job's finished, but all the little stuff, like like right now I'm doing the AC, so it's all custom, so I have to make it. Yeah. It's like, oh. So did you get it from ground up? Yeah, I took the frame, I took the body off the frame, and there's everything's all the bolts, everything came out of this thing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know that I'll do it again, you know? But now I can say I did it, you know? I don't know that that's a good thing, though. No? All right. Yes. All right, so let's test this hose cutter here. See how this thing works. Work for this. Yep. Sure. There you go. You can use a rigid. This is PC1375. Uh, Work. So my plan is to keep these hoses as long as possible to just kind of, this way if there's an issue later on, then I can always shorten them up later. Well, I think I have all the lines run now finally for the AC system. We'll need to crimp them, and but in the meantime, I'm gonna take a break, make some lunch. All right, so this is the crimp tool set that I got. I like it, Lane Keen. It looks like it's a pump setup. So let's go ahead and try it out. All different kinds of sizes. It comes with so many different I don't even know how to, 6, 8, 10, 12, and then starting with, looks like 6 SRB up to 12 SRB. I don't know what the S, or even 18. Oh no, that's 8 SRB, yeah. So, uh, and they're color-coded. All right, 
So we need to mark these, these lines so they're indexed properly, and we're gonna start with the back one first. I'm gonna mark it there, and kinda mark it there. So then when I pull this out, I can crimp it, and it will still be perfect. Perfectly orientated. And then we'll also make sure that it's slid on all the way. In the meantime, let's go ahead and pull this out. All right, that there. Let's go ahead and get our crimp tool out. Now this is the number eight, I believe. Let's look on our diagram. It doesn't really say, but I think this is number eight. Let's go ahead and try number eight. Well, I'm guessing we slide this over. Oh, look, that's pretty neat. You can just open this up, slide this on here. Oh man, I tripped my bumper. Ah, definitely gonna have to repaint the bumper now. That's the straw that broke the camel's back right there. That's not good. There we go. All right. Try this out. Looks like it's in all the way. I'm gonna get a light to make sure that it's crimped right. All right. I don't really know how much you're supposed to do with this, but I'm guessing that when it gets to the end, it'll stop all by itself. Well, that's all the way. All right, now let's see. It's actually really easy. That was really easy. Yeah, you can't pull that apart. All right, now let's mark the other one. And of course, there we go. Put that mark nicely. Now this one is number 10. So I get the number 10 markers. We slide them in here like that. Slides in nice and easy. Put the center one in first and the little ones just kind of fall in. There we go. Put this over here. Now that we get this together, we put the little locking pin in there, which is just slides right in. Really straightforward. Make sure it goes all the way through. Make sure our alignment is, uh, is perfect again. Not quite there. Perfect. Now we set the valve to close. One-handed squeeze, no big deal. There we go. There we go. All closed up as it gets it. Now we release it and then uh, pull this out and it's set. That's just so easy. Man, I'm so glad I got this tool. Lane Keen. This thing is so nice. Plus the link for you. Kind of center it up. Close the valve. All right. That should be good. There we go. All three lines completed. Or three fittings completed, rather. Now we just need to put it all together permanently. And we finally have the AC system done. Let me tell you how to grow your own mushrooms. That guy's funny. All right. So we have to hook up this trinary, which is something that controls the AC system and the uh, fan. It's uh, through vintage air. So I got my Deutsch connectors. I picked up this kit from uh, Monkey Fab Garage. I, I love their stuff. They're, they're a great group of guys. They, uh, they supported my channel early on. Uh, they reached out to me early on and just said, hey man, we really like what you're doing with your car. We'd love to send you some products and help you kind of finish your car up. And I'm like, what? That's crazy, man. So, you know, for just a simple little channel, they really, they really support just random people, man. They just, they just love cars, man. So when you get a chance, you know, check them out. I'll put a link in their page, but uh, I really can't say enough good things about them. They're a great, great group of guys. There's just two guys that are uh, welding up parts, and they do just phenomenal stuff, man. So I got this Deutsch connector kit from them. They sent me my, my fuel lines, which are, you know, PTFE. I told them what I was doing. I was kind of had some questions, and they just said, here, man, we'll, we'll just send you all the stuff for it for free. And uh, they didn't ask me to make a video or nothing. They just said, we're just going to send it to you, man. We think it's, we love your build. So I was like, man, that's freaking crazy. So, uh, yeah. So if you get a chance, I'll put a link in there for their page. They got all kinds of informative videos. They just sell great products, man. Uh, and I, I love Deutsch connectors. Ever since then, I started buying Deutsch connectors, and I just absolutely love them. So I use this kind of funny-looking tool here. I forget which one this is for. I'll have to look at it again, but... You set the size, all right, let's strip these off. The way the Deutsch connectors work is you have these little fittings that slide on, these little connectors, and they just slide right on. They have a little hole in them that shows you that it's, it's, it's buried deep in there. So I like to strip all the wires first. Try to strip them all evenly so they all kind of sit in there evenly. So this is a JR Ready tool. Man, this thing is the cat's meow, I'll tell you. When it comes to these connectors, what it does, it kind of it's got four teeth that kind of go in like like at different angles. Crimps the connector really, really good. It's not for regular, but it's any kind of barrel connection that you're gonna be able to pull this off. So there's that. And you can see that's just solid, man. This is solid. Their, um, their kit, they have, they have different kits for different size Deutsch connectors. Uh, this is like their master kit kind of. I forget what I paid for it, honestly, but but I'll put a link in there. Check them out, man. Like I said, it's a great group of guys who are just, to me, they're just, they're awesome, man. This one's already used. That's why I wouldn't go in there. This tool is the same as what the cat tool is, but it's significantly less priced. And uh, the, the kit comes with one. I just had a lot that I was going to do, and I wanted to do a little bit bigger. I wanted to do 10 gauge for my seats and stuff like that. So that's why I bought this particular tool. And... Uh, I'm telling you, this is so impressive. 
I remember growing up when you bought a Japanese tool or something like that, or you bought a tool that wasn't like a craftsman or something like that, it was pretty much crap. And I would say that a lot of tools are still crap. But if you do your research and you get, you know, some recommendations from people that know what they're talking about and have used different products and they can tell you, you know, as long as you know that they're not just getting paid to do it, to give you a good review. Like this tool right here, that's just so nice, man. And then what you do is you kind of slide this down. Deutsch connectors are kind of weatherproof, if I'm not mistaken. Not kind of, they, they are weatherproof, if I'm not mistaken. And, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I should have, I should have put the connectors on and then pulled it through, but that's okay. That's the nice thing about Deutsch connectors is you can actually pull the wires out after. I mean, you can actually pull the, you pull, you know, like say if you, say if you made this and you wanted, you wanted to go from four connector to a six connector, with a normal with a normal connector, you have to take the whole thing apart and basically start off start off new, right? So with with a Deutsch, you don't have to do that. What you're doing is is if you wanted to say say if I, I said hey you know what I actually need six wires of this connector. I don't need to. All I need to do is pull the wires back through and push them into a six connector, which makes Deutsches so incredible compared to other ones, which is nice. This it has a little bit of like a tooth in there essentially that kind of bites that connector and because I pushed the wires in like a fool this is a really nice setup when you do it right I, I just messed it up all you do is you just slide them in and they click which makes it so freaking cool which shows just how how easy this setup is when you do it wrong you can fix yourself so easy so there we go now you put one of these little locking tabs down in there they slide right down in there there we go isn't that pretty cool now my other favorite product is Tessa tape I don't know Honestly, I don't know. I'm guessing that's the brand. I don't know. I don't know if it's the brand or what, but this stuff is so much nicer than, than the old electrical tape that I used to use, that vinyl stuff. It just it's just got such a quality look to it to me. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just kooky. I mean, I am kind of crazy, but you know, maybe I'm just crazy about these wires. But So this essentially is two sets of switches. That's what this, that's what this trinary is. I don't know why they call it trinary. Maybe... Um, I don't know. The other one's binary, a binary switch, and this is a trinary. It shouldn't be. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't get that because you only have the other one. The binary has one switch, and this is a trinary, and it's only two switches. So this one should be a binary to me, and the other one should be, I don't know, whatever you call a single pole switch. It's a single pole switch. And uh, yeah. I don't carry my knife with me when I'm working on my car because I don't want to scratch it up. Now, I did scratch the bumper today, which is pretty frustrating, but it's okay. Luckily, I know a guy who paints. It's me, by the way. So there we go. Now, a nice professional wire loom. Looks very professional. You can do this at home. Real simple. Now, I've got this. I've got my two sets so I can easily hook them up. Left and a right. Boom, boom. Done deal. All right. All right, the last thing we're going to do here is we put this trinary switch in. And that's how babies are made. Thank you so much, my friend. Did it work? Yes. Nice, man. Are you keep it, man, for next time. Yeah, yeah, thank you. If keep I need it. them, maybe you need them. Uh, no, I don't need them, thank man. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Have a good day, man. Thank I'm glad you, you got it done, buddy. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. Hi, baby. Daddy.